sure to check the description down below for easy access to the different topics and subtopics of the Mountain Podcast glitch that you are looking for, as well as the definitions of the terms that I use. Enjoy the video. Hello, hello, and good day, everyone. Welcome to Dragon Age Gates Glitch Tutorial Bonus Video for Episode 58, where we're going to be discussing everything that has to do with the Mountain Bypass glitch. Now, the Mountain Bypass glitch in itself is basically the, probably the most broken, can be the most complicated, as well as the most important and crucial one to learn and let, if you want to do some of the other glitches. Most notable, like the Drunken Ring glitch, the Under the Sea glitch, and as well as accessing caves with Arak. Now, let's see here. What we're going to be discussing is about 12 topics to kind of help you guys become masters of the Mountain Bypass glitch. So this will be a lot easier to perform all these glitches. First, we'll discuss the Anywhere Mountain Bypass glitch, followed by the original Mountain Bypass glitch, the general controls from inside the mountain because they are vastly different from the controls out here, dismounting Arak from the tallest mountains, Maneuvering inside the mountain from the mountain side, maneuvering inside the mountain from the outer limit side, because both of those are different. Two theories that explain how this is all possible. Two that I came up with that I think is really right on the money. Saving the game inside the mountain, entering and exiting caves with Arak, traversing the narrow passages inside the mountain, mountain to mountain bypassing, many things you can find inside the mountain, and then finally, with a little bonus, use what we learned to traverse from the Forgotten Tomb to Digmog's Lair. Alright, let's get started here. The Anywhere Mountain Bypass glitch, in order to perform this glitch, you need to know the controls for doing it. So let's go to the controller settings. Now I, I basically use the standard control settings so far, as far as doing these uh, glitch tutorial videos. And so let's see here. What we need to do is use L2, left control stick, right control stick, and the triangle button. The triangle button you can use as needed. I mostly basically hold if I'm having trouble doing the Anywhere Mountain Bypass glitch, I always uh, hold the triangle up to make sure Arc is at the highest altitude as possible that he can go. The invisible ceiling that prevents him from flying any higher allows this glitch to work. The work with the ceiling and the mountainside of an Arak uh, strafing, even though that's actually not in terms of definition, it's more of an aerial attack, but we'll go with what the what the term is being used for here, which is basically moving side to side. So we're going to use L2 and uh, the left control stick to straight back and forth. Now also what will help is to use the right control stick to get Eric at the right angle. This is what, that little jaggery motion, that's what we're looking for. So for this glitch to work, you need kind of a good mountainside that allows Arak to, to basically uh, to move a per, to move parallel to a mountainside to then be forced into a perpendicular part of the mountainside. I know I said before that acute angles are best, though of course the more acute angle, I mean if you were to have basically this whole mountainside squeezed into together, it can make things actually rather harder to do. So the best point is right a right angle, and anywhere close to that you can do the Anywhere Mountain Bypass glitch. Anything that's basically flat across, let me see if there's a good example of, ah, I think... Anything that's flat across it would be hard to do to get Arak in the mountainside. You can probably get the jittery movement a little bit, but you're not going to get into the mountainside. You need to look for that right angle, much like even right here. I have a bit of a right angle, which will Arak do this jittery movement, and will be going into the mountain. Now that being said, the controls when you start... Um, going into the mountain. Well, to get into the mountain in the first place, 
you need to actually strafe in the opposite direction that you want to get into. I want to get into right there. So what I want to do is strafe to the right, use the right control stick to get a good angle, make sure, make sure I'm at the right altitude, so I was actually a bit too low for that. And okay, moving to the right, holding L2, and moving to the right. Ah. Oh, oh, almost, just hold it, hold it, just come on, keep trying, keep trying. Almost there. There we go. Boom. I'm in. Now, it's kind of weird when you're actually in the mountainside. Uh, it's basically the controls are inverted. Once when you're fighting on the mountain, once you're in the mountainside, the uh, movement, the left and right movement of the controls is normal. But when you're in the mountainside, it's inverted. To move right means to go move left, and to move left means to go right. That means if you want to stay in the mountainside, you don't move to the left, you move to the right until Arik is completely in the mountainside. I mean, not, not, not a single piece of his wing touching the mountainside. Okay, that being said, it's also just a note that you basically, if you're facing this way, want to go on to there, you just basically tilt the control stick to the left, hold it, and then Arik will start doing a jittery movement to then go inside. Alright, let's move on. Now, the, mount, the original mountain bypass glitch is relatively obsolete, given that you can do the anywhere mountain bypass glitch to basically well, get into any location you want to. However, it is still useful when getting into Cragmore and getting into uh, the Valley of the Fallen early on in the game because it's right there. I mean, the anywhere mountain bypass glitch is difficult to do when you have a low ledge like this. If you need to get, if there's something on the other side of here that you want to get to specifically, the low ledge makes it very hard, which makes the uh, this version of the glitch still very viable in certain situations. So let's go ahead and move Arik up all the way. So we landed here, move Arik up all the way. We're going to hit triangle, and that will get Arik into the mountain. The ceiling, since Arik is trying to, whenever Arik uh, flies up, let's get here on a normal ground. When he flies up, he flies up just a little bit. That little bit of height that he gets messes with the ceiling, which forces him back down, which causes him to get into the mountainside without ever having to strafe in the first place. Now, that being said, you still need to strafe in order to stay in the mountainside. So hitting triangle to having Arak fly up is just part of it. So here we go. We're going to hit triangle. Then we're going to... Might as well hold... We'll hold L2. We'll go ahead and hold L2 right now. Because um, there's no harm in doing so. We're going to hit triangle. And then we're going to tilt the control stick to the right to pop him inside. And tilt the control stick to the left to keep him inside. And that is how you do the original mountain bypass glitch using a ledge that Ara can land on and walk past the ceiling. Alright, when dealing with the controls when you're inside the outer limits. Let's see, let's go to the options again. Let's look at the controller. Okay, so the turn and move is actually going to be a bit different. You're going to be basically using the left control stick to turn rather than move. In order to move, we're actually going to be strafing with the mountain side or the uh, or the outer limits. Again, it's important to note that the controls are vastly different. You're not able to fly up or fly down with Arak. Though in some locations, you might be able to fly forward a little bit. Let me see if I can get to a good spot here. Should be. Oh, ah, I'm getting absorbed into the mountain again. Oh, uh, as I said before, there is a gravity pull that pulls you towards the mountain and, pour, and pulls you towards the outer limits as well. So finding that equilibrium can be a little bit hard. I'm trying to find a good spot for you guys to show you that 
In some places, you can actually do the... Let's see, pop over here. Ah, almost pop in here. Okay, there we go. In some locations, if you got a low enough ceiling, you can fly forward a bit. Usually, the wider the low ceiling, the better in terms of being able to fly forward. But in most parts, you basically are going to be using strafing to move to move around. And now, to move around with either it be the outer limits or the mountainside, you're going to move with the pattern uh, that it has. It's borderline. Here it's clear cut of what the borderline is, using the right control stick to move, maneuver around. But also with the mountainside, you can still see, know where about the mountainside, how it turns and stuff, and be able to know exactly where you need to go. Now that being said, when you are being pulled into the mountainside, there is one thing you need to know, again, is that once when you're in the mountain, your controls are inverted. When you pop into the mountain, that's when you tilt the control stick to the left to pop Arik into the mountain, and now he's inside. Now, we're going to get into more detail once we start talking specifically about maneuvering uh, Arik via the mountainside. But let's first delve into something else that you can do with the Outer Limits when going on top of the mountains. So there are some locations that where Rin can actually just traverse up the mountainside by just landing Eric up on a high slope and then can then access either normally or by jump glitches like the uh, Scone Killer's Ring Glide glitch to get up to uh, the mountaintops without Eric. However, in most cases you're going to need to use a mountain bypass glitch in order to get up there. So in addition to knowing how to get in there via the Anywhere Mountain Bypass glitch or the Mountain Bypass glitch, which I'm going to try to attempt the original, here we go, is once we get in there, if you can find a slope that is that's basically traversable, where it's not steep enough, where it's not too steep, you can basically land Arik up on the mountainside. So it's basically applying the same principles as land landing Eric on other locations that it cannot be too steep. Now, to in order to do this, so we're going to need to basically try to pop in Eric with the mountainside. And we're going to then, in addition to that, we're, as we fly in here, we're going to hit the X button as soon as Eric pops in. This will allow Arak, if I get to the right uh, location to do so, to basically pop on top. Here we go. And also, there is kind of a weird thing that you can do. I think you can do it down there normally. But, if I can get Arak up on top of the mountainside here, trying to find that slope can be a bit tricky. Nope, not there. How about here? Ah, there we go. Is this. If you hold X and triangle, you can have Arik basically kind of frozen in place like this. Kind of like a gargoyle in a sense. Okay, now, and actually keeping Ren up here, you can actually uh, maneuver around Arik just a little bit by turning him, but you can't actually move forward or side to side unless you actually utilize that little trick I just showed you with this. This will actually, upon completion of animation, can move Arik a little bit. However, sometimes Arik will just pop right back down into the mountain because this is basically where he needs, where he exists, which is down below. Now, also, if you do this a little bit, you can actually help Ren try to find the good location for her to jump off on. It can take it can take a few moments to get it to work. It can either be almost immediate, or it can take it anywhere, even up to ten minutes to actually find the right location. Okay, there we go. Now what you want to do is, if you want to not have to load back to a save to continue on, you can go ahead and have Arik position himself close to the mountainside where he can leave. Because if you go too deep and dismount, he may be swallowed up by the mountain and will never come out again. That being said, jumping up on the mountainside actually messes with your shadow just a little bit. It kind of turns it off kilter, uh, moves it off to the right, to the left. 
Though in some situations, it is overly exaggerated on how far the shadow is moved from where it's supposed to be. So here's coming an example of how exaggerated you can make the shadow be. Of its distance away from the actual Ren and as well as Arak. So right here, see? This is very, very unusual where you have Arak actually standing up still on top of the mountaintop even though he's beyond the ceiling. Of course, he can't move or anything. But look at my shadow. Look at Rin. Rin has a sh basically a, a shadow counterpart of herself just running about her. Okay, there goes Arak. I mean, he can't stay up there for long, but I think the reason why he's up there in the first place is because he has a little bit of portion of him is just below the ceiling, just being able to have him stay up there. If you notice, he was on a tilt. So a part of his body probably was below the ceiling, which allowed him to stay up there longer. Again, I am not too sure about that. As far as I've tried, it's not really repeatable. And geez, Rin's hair is really going crazy. Look at this. Look at her hair. <laughs> well, in any case, let's go ahead. We're going to see if I can keep this Shadow Hohan with, along with Arak. So she's actually seems to be floating above the ground, which is, I guess, as a result from dismounting Arak when he was st when he was able to still actually be there. Of course, hitting select actually fixes that little issue, but it doesn't really fix Arak. However, look at his shadow, Jiminy Christmas Arak. How far did your shadow get away from you? <laughs> Come, Shadow Dragon. We have many things to accomplish today. But in any case, there's actually, as far as I have seen, there is literally no way to correct what just happened. I've tried, I think I even dismounted Arak back on top of there, it still didn't fix. And look, it even reverts Ren back to uh, her uh, being elevated above the ground, as well as her um, shadow still being apart from her. So. No, hitting select doesn't help on top of Arak, so you permanently have a shadow buddy along your side. Again, this is made possible probably because Arak was actually able to stay up there for a little bit. So you jumped off Arak that was able to stay up there. Not even flying up and flying back down, not even doing the mountain bypass glitch is going to help. It's kind of kind of cute seeing that little shadow uh, swing side to side as uh, dismounting there, but it's just a it's just kind of interesting, uh, kind of a new glitch to show you guys that you can only do with the Mountain Bypass glitch, and look at this. You can actually have a shadow within a shadow, in which Rin's shadow will appear a lot darker. Oh, and her hair is still going crazy. Well, I guess you can tell you got the glitch working if Rin's hair is going really crazy. Okay, and that aside, let's go ahead and continue discussing dismounting Arak in the Outer Limits. That being said, you're free to explore the mountainside. There's a lot of things that's kind of odd about traversing the mountainside that has some weird effects that are kind of displayed throughout all my glitch tutorial videos coming up here. Sometimes when you're doing the uh, spell casting, her body will all of a sudden tilt like she's trying to do a stretching workout routine. Other times when you use a enchant ended weapon, only maybe half of it is enchanted, much like the, what happened with the flame strike in one episode. But that being said, being able to walk up here in the outer limits, wherever you want to be, is made possible thanks to the mountain bypass glitch. So again, using X when you pop into the, as soon as you pop into the mountain, to hit X, and then try to dismount with Ren. And again, it may take a few tries. If there are a few tries, but if you got if you got Arak free and out here, you can just go ahead, slide down here. Of course, not die, but try to find a place to do aneurysma slide jump glitch. You'll be able to safely transcend down and then continue on the game without ever having to load back. The mountain bypass can also allow us to be able to dismount to areas that are currently not really rendered with the other game. Now, if I can just get to the location in the first place. Come on, come on. Oh, there we go. Whew. 
finally was able to make it here. Gosh, it does take a bit of effort, but there are some locations, like such as right here in the outer limits, that actually are not rendered with the rest of the map. Basically, you have to mount a bypass and figure out, hey, and when pursuing the outside the outer limits, is there actually anything more? So, just to keep in mind uh, that when using this glitch, you can actually get to other locations if there's any unrendered areas that exist on the other side. Which, if you look over there, there was Arak, you can actually be able to physically be able to see that this area is adjacent to the mountainside. See? Now, the question is exactly how to get over there. Well, there's a few ways to do it. One way is actually to roll into here, either jump or roll into here, with some mixed success, of course. If either jumping or rolling doesn't work, you can actually just run into the outer limit to get to the other side. It does take some effort, but it can be done. There is a fourth way, aside from jumping, running, and rolling, and that is to do the infinite climb glitch. And that has a very mixed success as you have a chance to actually die from doing that. So be sure to save when exploring these areas in case of something like this happens. Alright, let's go ahead and move on and discuss about exploring the mountainside with the mountain bypass glitch. So before we talk about moving along the outer limits, let's learn about how we have to maneuver around the mountainside. Remember that there is a constant gravity pull that's always pulling you in that direction. That being said, what you want to do, since basically you cannot, as we learned in the controls, we can't simply fly forward. Usually when you have the gra when the gravity is pulling you towards the mountain, you cannot fly forward. If it's not pulling you, then you can fly forward for a little bit until the gravity starts pulling you again. However, that being said, what we want to do is basically use the mountainside to help us maneuver around. And whenever we get start sucked in the mountainside, just use it. Just tip, tip your control stick in the opposite direction, pop them out of here by tilting the control stick to the direction you want to go once when Arak is completely popped in. Again, here we go. I'm getting sucked into the... I'm going to try to move a little bit further. Just a little bit. Okay. Right and then left. Right, left. That's how we go ahead and help us maneuver around here because we can simply right, left, and then use the right control stick and angle Arak towards the mountain and we can help him maneuver around here. Now, a nice little shortcut because I do have to say in most cases when you have an overarch right here you can't simply just fly get to the other side and sometimes which is usually the reason why I do not like messing with those round these types of parts of the mountain that bow out like that sometimes our can easily just phase through without even a chance to fight so to avoid that scenario completely what we want to learn is how to launch Arak. so Launching Arak basically utilizes Arak being pulled into the mountain, to the control to the left, then pulling to the left. Arak actually has a lot of force behind his movement, which will help us bypass the gravity pulls of these three areas. You've got a gravity pull that's pulling you towards, towards the right, to the left, and straight ahead. So that whole entire gravity pull really hurts in terms of maneuvering Arak around there, which probably leads to sometimes uh, Arak being actually forced out of the mountain without a chance to fight. So that being said, so we're going to utilize that idea. See, I cannot move to the left, so we're going to go into the mountain, pop left, and booyah, right there, boom. Real easy to do if once when you get it down. And it really helps you do a nice little shortcut around the whole entire mountain. Side so popping up over here, moving over here. Control stick to move Arrow to the mountain. Oh, well, I'm just going to pop over here. Oh, almost. There we go. Woo! 
And that's really what you do to maneuver around the mountainside. A lot of just launching Arak and just moving using uh, Arak. You basically don't want to face this way and try to maneuver around the mountainside just because you can't really see where the mountainside and sometimes when you just can't see, you're like already fighting with the mountain and likely may not be able to respond in time. Okay, I have to go back here and Sir Donna to discuss this one. This one, and since we're exploring the mountainside, and this one is just in general whether it be mountainside or the outer limits, is if you've got a little depression that extends below the invisible ceiling, then you're going to have a hard time getting out of that because once when you enter it, this is what happens. If I can get in there in the first place. You have Arak that is literally stuck. There's not much that he can do. Now since I'm close to the wall, I can actually get out of this. But first and foremost, I just want to say, if you experience this, if you see something like this, when exploring either the outer limits or the a low ceiling that's further away from the mountainside or in, on, in a land bridge then you're going to be put into a tough spot here as you there is literally no way to escape from it now when you're close to the mountainside you can actually follow the lines here the polygon lines here to actually get Arak out of this situation. We use Arak's launching ability to clear the low ceiling as uh, we have learned. So with that we can get out of here but if this little depression was like in the center of right there or towards the outer limits there is literally nothing that you can do. It's thanks to the mountainside and being able to launch Arak in other directions to get away from that is what uh, you're able to do to get out of that situation. But in other cases, you're going to have to load to a previous save. I am sorry. Now to avoid this, let's go ahead and launch Arak and just avoid that situation in the first place. So whenever you see those just go to a side that where they're not there or use Arak's launching ability to launch around them. All right, let's head back to Ravenshold. Since we're going to be talking about maneuvering the outer limits, let's first discuss how to get there in the first place. So we learned about launching Arak. And in fact, I need to add one more thing to that when using the mountainside to launch Arak. And that is actually, you can hold the, the control stick like here in the opposite direction where I want to go, where I want to keep Arak in the mountain. So I'm holding the control stick to the left to send him into the mountain, which will cause the controls to invert and keep pushing him back into the mountain. So I'm going trying to get out, but he's being pushed back in. I'm just holding the control stick to the left, and it'll just keep doing this loop here. Or I can just do it here, hold it to the right again. I want Arak to stay in the mountain, so once when he gets once when he gets swallowed by the mountain, just hold the control stick to the right, and you can just hold it there until you're ready to launch Arak. If you need if you need that prep time. For me, I've done it I've done it enough where I can just fight and just go on. But if you need that little prep time, just hold it oh the control stick down. Just wait for that perfect time and then go, 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 launch him. That being said, there are some limitations to the launch power. And this comes in terms of trying to maneuver Arak from the mountainside to the outer limits. If the gap is too wide, Arak is not going to be able to get to the outer limits no matter how hard you launch him because of two factors. One of the lesser factors has to do when we talked about that gravity effect. So the gravity here is kind of elongated, so it's going to be pulling Arak from a longer distance. And that, and since it's a longer distance, Arak's not able to clear that gravity. The other factor here is Arak is also fighting with a low ceiling. Arak, I forgot to mention this, I'll mention it right here as if this really applies. When Arak is in the outer limits, he's at the mercy of the 
lower ceilings. If he's right here flying with the lower ceilings, he can only fly with the lower ceiling. He cannot fly outside the lower ceiling. He can only launch himself out of the... See how I cleared it just a little bit? However, the game tends to want to pull Arik to the nearest lowest ceiling, and so when you don't have that low ceiling, then Arik's going to be pulled back to it. So you need to be sure you can clear it and get to the other side. In this situation, where you're not able to clear it, you're just going to have to move Arik, either move him, either continue on with him to get to a point where Arik will be able to do it, which I think I should be able to do it here. Yes, I did. Or... Or you can do one other thing. You can also use low ceiling like a land bridge if the low ceiling extends both from the mountainside to the outer limits. And it doesn't matter how much gravity you got of the mountainside, unless Arg is literally being swallowed by it. But you can actually just use the low ceiling and you can just maneuver back and forth at whim. Now that being said, when you're on the outer limit side, you're not going to be able to go across large gaps. The only way you can actually get back from the outer limits is using a low ceiling. So again, the low ceilings are the easiest and most important things, but being able to launch Arik anywhere to get to the outer limits can be key. Now that being said, the outer limits comes with its perks and comes with its downsides. And one of its perks, its obvious perks, you're not going to be swallowed by the mountain. You're safe here in regards to that. <clears throat> also, just to note, the controls are a little bit different. The downside is that you have very limited mobility, but you are able to angle yourself however you want. Let's go to the controls here. So we're going to be using, just like we did talked about with the uh, using the mountainside here, we're going to be using L2, of course, to strafe. We're going to be using the left control stick to move Arak in the direction we want to go. We're going to use the right control stick to turn Arak in case if we need to follow uh, anywhere on the mountainside. Like I'm going to, I'm moving here. I'm going to turn Arak just a little bit to the right so I can continue on. Turn it to the left. Turn it to the right, and doing like that just follow the mountainside of course if you got a low ceiling you'll have a bit more room to be able to move our so you won't have to be hugging the outer limits the entire time back to the controls you there's two other features that you didn't have to use in the uh, you doing the mountainside and that is either hitting let's go to Arax, either hitting the fly down repeatedly the x button or the strafe button repeatedly, the L2 button. This allows Arak when he's kind of in a spot where even if I do turn him, he's not going to get going. But if I just either hit X repeatedly or uh, hitting X repeatedly, he'll be able to maneuver around. Personally, I like the L2 uh, button the best because that way I can keep my right thumb on the right control stick. Otherwise, I have to move it off and hit the X button repeatedly, and then I have to use the, I have to use the left control stick to kind of maneuver around and then move him to the left. I don't want to use my left control stick aside from moving, because otherwise it'll slow me down. Also, I could just uh, try to uh, hold a controller in a position where I can keep my thumb on the uh, controller and use my fingers on my right hand to do... Uh, hitting the X button repeatedly, but that gets really awkward and feeling and can actually tire out my hand very fast. So hitting L2 repeatedly is the best. And of course, if, you're, if your uh, index finger ever gets tired, you can always switch back to the X button and give your finger a break. Because again, you're going to be tapping in some places quite a lot. But it is one of the fastest way to get there until you get to a land bridge that you can actually just, oh, quick, quick maneuver around, and there we go. So again, the controls are, there we go, is the L2, the left control stick, right control stick, and using the X button or the L2 button, pressing them repeatedly 
to be able to maneuver around. Okay, and that being said, let's talk about one thing that uh, is kind of hampers your journey with this. In some dungeons, you're actually going to encounter a glitch where if you were to have Arak go to the outer limits, it can actually freeze Arak, no matter what you do. So let's go ahead and head back to Low Seawing. So we went ahead into the ancient tomb, and we're going to see what happens. So normally, I should be able to rotate Arak in the outer limits completely without him freezing. I can just rotate to a complete 360 and he's fine. But in this case, however, if I turn and my camera goes outside the outer limits, well, Arak's frozen. I can't move him at all. He's stuck. I can toggle with the uh, different powers he's got, but I can't do anything else. Aside from just listen to the music. So you can either load back from a previous save where you did not go into the dungeon, or you can go through the gate, or you can go through another transition save, and it should undo the glitch. Sardana is kind of a little interesting, though. That if you do the uh, if you do the transition save when you get into uh, the Inquisitor's Lair, it will still freeze the game. That little cave right there will still cause it to freeze the game, but it, but the other transition saves, you're fine. So just keep in mind, the gates will, the gates will undo that little annoying glitch, and you should be able to rotate Arak with ease. And that is important because when we get into later discussing uh, narrow passages, when the basically the mountainside is pretty much touching the outer limits, uh, you're going to be having Arak going into this position a lot, and it basically makes the that part of the mountain untraversable due to the fact that it would just freeze Arak in place. So just if that happens, you just got to go through the gate or another transition save and come right back. All right. So let's go ahead and continue on discussing more things. Let's go ahead and talk about an uh, another plus side. Let's fight that negative with another plus. So we are back over by the sea where the pushy boundaries are. And we're going to discuss the upside of using the outer limits, which is to bypass the pushy boundaries. So let's use the Anywhere Mountain Bypass glitch to get in here. And then we first, trying to just do the mountain side, I'm just going to experience the pushy boundaries. And it runs the risk that I'm going to be forced out of there. I mean, if I got too close and get shoved right into the mouth side, I could possibly be pushed out without actually having a fight. However, using the outer limits can actually allow Arif to bypass these pushy boundaries and get to areas that the developers have basically tried to keep off limits. So these lead to a another realm of glitches that you can experience such as behind the sea glitches the glitch where Ren can basically fly around with an equipped weapon or even uh, some potential background glitches and especially the drunken Ren glitch alright let's go ahead and continue on this discussion of the outer limits Okay, so sometimes the outer limits can be such a pain when maneuvering that sometimes it is better to do the mount aside to a certain point until you need to use the outer limits. However, choosing the mount aside still runs the risk of having Arak phase out of the mountain without a fight. So again, this will be able to save Arak. But well, let's try. I'm going to try to get to a position where it is impossible to traverse any further. Okay, so when you're dealing with a little more jagged boundaries here on the outer limits, it's a very hard to traverse around, but it can be done. Just try your best to see where the angle is and trying to help Arik along by hitting L2 again. It's important, and you're going to be hitting that button a lot, so remember what I said about using the X button to give your finger a break. 
You may even have to readjust your left hand to put it in a more favorable position for more button mashing. If you got a part where it's basically so jagged and and or you got a, a very nice round edge up there, it's impossible to find exactly where the point is. I'm going to try my best here and try to angle Arak to get out, but unfortunately it's so tight that even if I try, Arak will likely disappear and I can't see a dang where I need to go. So in this point, I'm actually going to have to try to retreat with Arak. But due to the, I'm so darn close to the outer limits on both ends, remember, my camera is sensitive to the fact that Arak is so close. And when he's close like this and I got him out of view, all I can do is turn him around. I can't actually move, I can't move left or right in this state. I have to get him out in order to move him. So it can be very problematic when you got some very jagged edges. Because again, you would have outer limits on the right and the left. So it makes it untraversable. In this situation, you either are going to have to backtrack to the next lowest ceiling and go over on the mountainside and try again, or you can load back from a previous save. So again, we're seeing jagged edges like that over there, and it seems a bit daunting. Don't test your fate. Save yourself the trouble and get over to the mountainside. And maneuver if you're able to. Again, if there is a pushy boundary that's pushing our, out of the mountain, you may not have any choice but to go there. And you'll just have to do your best with trying to angle Arak and trying to get through the outer limits. Again, with the jagged, it's not too bad. It's it's not too big of a problem. It's still a little bit, uh, it's still a little tedious, but it can be done. But unlike that situation we were in, that is just you're just better off just doing the mountainside in general. All right, one part of the using the outer limits is an advantage over the mountainside is when one mountainside doesn't exist at all. You see it over there, but you can't get over there because you're actually in this rendered part of the mountain and not that part. Thankfully, the both sides of the rendered and unrendered are adjacent, so we should be able to use the same stri uh, strifing formula that we've been doing before and use X button and the L2 button, either of those buttons repeatedly to get over the other side. With a little bit of effort, there we go, we should be able to pop on over. Just like we did with Ren when she was exploring the outer limits and to get to that one unrendered part of the mountain. The one thing that is unique about this is the fact that I can't use the Anywhere Mountain Bypass glitch to simply bypass into that unrendered part of the mountain because it exists past the pushy boundaries so I cannot access that part of the mountainside not to mention that the mountainside doesn't exist in that one part and I cannot bypass in that way. I have to use the outer limits therefore I would need to know how to traverse inside the mountainside. The more you know here is one thing that's either a bane or a boon depending on how you want to use the outer limits. And that is bypassing into caves with Arak. Now in order to use the outer limits to bypass into caves in the first place, one factor needs to exist. And that is that the cave below that you're trying to get into has a part of it that extends past the outer limits of the mountain you're exploring. It's go into like this and you'll automatically be uh, put into the cave. Now note that the controls are now back to normal. You're no longer able are interacting with the mountain anymore. So if your goal is trying to diverse in through the mountain with Arak, then you're going to need to go to the other side of the mountain to continue going because otherwise you'll just get sucked into the mountain exploring the outer limits. That's the bane. The boon is if you want to be here in the first place then by all means this is one of the easiest ways to do it again if a part of the cave extends past the outer limits. So with that you can explore the cave with Arak, you can even kill some of the enemies with Arak. Also, you can access 
what glitches that I call background or atmospheric glitches, which are the transitions of the backgrounds and atmospheres when you go into caves. With this, you can really have a unique experience exploring the outdoor landscape of Dragon the Ancient Gates. The two theories I'm about to discuss is very crucial to the very existence of the mountain bypass. Aside from the low scene allowing the Arak to be pushed in here, that itself is clear cut. Now, one thing I need to discuss, however, something that I overlooked was a part of the low ceiling. Now, I've been throwing it here and there when discussing the outer limits and the uh, mountain side being traversing either from low land bridges or being isolated certain locations much like here but there's one thing I overlooked so I basically separated a low the low ceiling from basically the outer limits and the mountain side because they behave differently how you traverse and everything how you're basically able to launch Arak and how you can with the outer limits where there's limited movement but one thing I have neglected to actually uh, realize is that both the outer limits and the mount site are themselves a low ceiling much like right here how I'm able to move along with the mount site well that's because it's a low ceiling only low ceilings allow our true diverse in fact, when going over here, when uh, discussing, I was saying that like a gravity pull that's pulling Arak towards. Actually, I'm not sure. I don't think it's a horizontal gravity pull. I think it's actually basically the game wanting the Arak to remain with a low ceiling, or basically to be consistent with the position of his back. Well, let me demonstrate. Something I just discovered in part with the low ceiling is actually if I get Arak. You know why I said a big giant gap that Arak can't traverse? Well, that's normally true, but in some cases, if actually, if you get to a spot with the this low ceiling that's here, thanks to this low ceiling, I can actually then angle Arak a little bit to actually have him fly forward. And actually, if I do it just right, if the game will let me, I should be able to get to the other side by tilting Arak back. By trying to position Ren's body to basically be facing the same direction uh, parallel to the mountain's uh, top, I should be able to get Arak from... Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. I'm right there. I'm right there. Come on. Up, up. Come on. Right there. Ah, up. Also, i got to be careful. If you tilt Arak too far back, he'll just do a flip. What you don't want to do... Because then you're back to square one. Okay. But until Arak back a little bit, I should be able... Oh, there we go. Yep. See? Right there. By tilting Arak just a little bit to match the... Um, to match the angle of the mountain slope, I'm able to move Arak forward. This is true in almost any direction, except it doesn't quite work well with the uh, outer limits because of the camera angle. But... But even said, you can just go ahead and just move uh, to a land bridge and trying to get to the other side, much like right here. Again, the reason why I'm able to move with the outer limits and the mountain side is because they are in fact low ceilings. In fact, the um, outer limits, the higher the outer limit goes up into the mountain slope, the harder it is to traverse if not impossible if it goes way up and also if there is a low ceiling present like right here it's a lot easier to diverse but once when I don't have that low ceiling and the outer limit is basically your only low ceiling you have left then you get a very hard to diverse and which you will have to utilize the L2 as well as the X button to try to traverse through. But once we have a low ceiling, you should be able to take give your fingers a break. 
But if it wasn't for this low ceiling of basically the game wanting Arak to only move along the low ceiling, the traversing the outer limits, uh, well, traversing the mountain inside the mountain would be impossible. You have to have take the factor that the low ceiling is in fact the key to traverse around here. And when going from left to right, basically only Ara can traverse if there's a low ceiling or if there's a way to angle Ara up to have a move a bit forward. Of course, when it goes so high up, there's no amount of tilting that's going to get Ren to be able to move forward. It's so high up that she'll just basically flip over before she can actually even utilize that high of an arch. That being said, in order to actually, in normal circumstances, uh, to be able to even begin in the first place to be inside the mountain here, you have to be able to launch Arak in. Now, there's a lot of games in previous past, much like Super Mario uh, 64 and such, which utilizes a glitch to bypass certain uh, pushy boundaries or areas or pass through walls by building up almost endless amount of momentum uh, by doing long jumps and stuff like that. And other games utilize that same mechanic as well that can basically propel with a lot of potential energy to then launch your character through walls, through any pushy boundaries or invisible barriers that would contain your character. So, now here I cannot build just an endless amount. There is basically a fixed amount of potential energy that's there. But the key thing that there is potential energy. And then once we turn into kinetic energy, you're able to launch Arak across. And again, as I said, as long as you have um, not too big of an arch or anything, you should be able to traverse anywhere you want because of that potential energy of Arak fighting with the mountainside. Of course, that potential is killed if it eats, if there is a slope on the mountain like here that eats up your momentum. So that, those two are the most important crucial theories that make the mountain bypass glitch work. If there was not any potential energy to launch Arak forth, I would not be able to get into the mountainside. In fact, I'll probably be just stuck here fighting with a mountain, unable to get inside. And if once when I get inside, then Argus stayed in here. And there was nothing. Tr if there was nothing true about the low ceilings, then Ara cannot even move any further than here, and it'll just be sucked right back out of the mountain. So knowing these key things of the tilt, how uh, Arak's back basically, or Ren's position of her body is basically in line of how the ceiling works and being moved with the ceiling. So you're not limited, you're not limited to, um, to having a low ceiling around you. You are basically have free reign of how you choose if you're stuck on a low ceiling. However, the one thing that will remain true that the pull towards the mountainside is always the strongest given that the that the mountainside always has the lowest ceiling which basically allows Arak to be sucked out. So so that is why even if you have a low ceiling that's why you can't just have Arak angle like this and then hopefully he'll get forward. Doing that will cause him basically to fall right out. So keep in mind that even if you do have a low ceiling that Arak is bound to close to the mountainside, you may not be able to go forward if that low ceiling is too close to the mountainside because the pole of the mountainside, as I said, is always the strongest. So knowing how the low ceiling works is key to being able to utilize how you move around here inside the mountain and how the mountain bypass glitch works in the first place along with the mini theory of being able to use launch arc with potential energy all right that being said let's go ahead and now continue on with discussing more parts about the mountain bypass glitch when saving the game inside the mountain 
you want to be sure that you're not being pulled into the mount side because sometimes when you don't expect it, when you load back from that save, in case if something were to happen, you can't get any further because you're stuck in the outer limits, uh, or something else happens, and you load back to the save, well, you might load back, and before you know it, your arc is already sucked out of the mountain because rendering issues. So kind of to uh, avoid that, there are two good places to save. One is when you're Right in on a low ceiling, one like looking for a land bridge. You got a low ceiling or a land bridge. You can go ahead and save the game, and you should be fine in loading back. The other place, as long as our doesn't freeze when going like this, as we discussed earlier, when going to certain locations inside of the levels of Dragon Age Gates, that will cause Arrow to freeze in the outer limits. As long as it's, that's not the case, you can save the game here and be able to load back without having to worry when you load back the game. Arrow is frozen, you can't do anything, and you'll have to go to a second save if you have one. Now, with that being said, there is certain tricks. That, there is one trick you can also use um, for saving the game, and let's go ahead to jump to that. So here, just like the Outer Limits, Here's another bane and boon of when exploring the mountainside in regards to saving the game. So when you save the game and you're directly above a cave here, most of the time, when you're directly above the cave, when you save the game, we'll save over this one, Arc will disappear. What this means is actually if you rotate Arc around here, you'll actually find that Arc is inside the cave. And no longer a part of the with the outer limits. And again, if you want to explore the outer limits further, then you're going to have to either backtrack or progress a little bit further before saving the game. So be mindful where you are and above the cave if you want to explore the outer limits. But if you want to exp again explore the cave, then here you go. Another way that you can access a cave, and it's quite handy given that there are some caves that don't extend past the outer limits. However, their their main body, if they are just underneath the top of the uh, mountainside or the part of the mountain that Ara can still be inside the inside the mountain, you save the game and Ara will disappear. You'll be able to rotate around and he'll pop in. Of course, sometimes rotating around will not work. So what you do is load the game, and Arak will still be inside the cave. So once we save the game and Arak disappears, you're already inside the cave. You can rotate around. If that doesn't work, just load the previous save, and you are inside the cave, and you can do whatever you want. You can actually escape out of the cave and back into the mountain if you do try to angle Arak to where he can actually see the mountainside. Now, given that you need to be in the part of the cave that's just below it, and not in the cave, part of the cave that's in the outer limits, so even then, doesn't guarantee you actually will be able to see the mountain. But try to get it to where you can. Try your best to try to get Eric to move out of the outer limits. Oh crap! Come on! Oh! Ah! 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 I just went back in because that's the one thing. Okay, I'm not in the right spot. Where is... there's the cave. Okay, I should be now back into a potential area if I can actually... Oh, oh darn it. There! Okay. Ah! Ah! There! Oh, I'm finally free. Get the camera back in. Okay, what we do here... Let's see, where am I? Ooh, I'm in a good spot here. So what we do here is then take the opportunity to kind of avoid um, getting back inside the cave. And then just try to get ourselves back to a land bridge. Get ourselves out of there so we can traverse on the mountainside instead. If we don't want to give it get into the cave and continue on traversing further down.
while we're still on the topic of caves, let's discuss about trying to get into a cave that's below another cave. Reason being is that when you have a cave above another cave, the cave that is above all the other caves is what the cave you're going to go into first. And then you have to deal with the outer limits of that cave, which will basically limit you from actually even getting to any other of the caves below. You'll, be, you'll essentially have to exit out of the cave, um, or if you're able to, fly all the way up and trying to get back in the outer limits. But preferably, you'll just leave outside of the cave, then go right back in with Arak, and then try again. So what we want to do here is be sure that when Arak goes in, rather it be through the outer limits here or the saving the game, that Arak is going to be above the cave, and that's the only cave he's going to interact with. So let's go ahead. We're going to get onto the outer limits side. We should face through here due that this is also a mountainside. Let's get over here. There we go. Down, 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 down. Oh, oh. Okay. Okay, there we go. We're able to access the cave here. Now that we're back inside the mountain, let's discuss about the cave above the other one that leads into the northern tundra. Now I want you to notice a difference here. Notice how it still is ex in existence, no matter how close or how far I am from it, or whichever camera angle I choose. If you encounter a cave that's like this, where it exists, no matter where you turn the outer limits, you will always see it. Then that means that this particular one, you can actually access without having to do uh, go into the outer limits or go and save the game. That also explains, let's go ahead and skip over to uh, the uh, gate that leads into the Valley of Fallen back in Sardana and discuss this little phenomenon a bit more. Well, welcome back to Sardana. We are back here behind the Valley of the Fallen to continue our discussion here. As when we do the Mountain Bypass glitch here, I want you to notice something. When we're in here, we're already inside the passageway, which is much like a cave. Now again, just like the cave that we were just talking about, the least in Northern Tundra, we are, as soon as you got in, you were all as soon as you got flew right over it, you were automatically inside, well, interacting with that cave. This is true here. This also shows that if if this or a cave exists in the outer limits, something that Rin can traverse through normally that you can walk through, then you will automatically pop in. However, if, like the lower cave, if it does not exist, depending on how far, how far, well, how close you are or what camera angle you use, then that would mean that you would have to use uh, the outer limits if, there, if the cave exists past that, Outer limits, which is always the easier way, aside from uh, saving the game uh, to get into the caves. But here you do not have to. So it just shows that if the cave or the passageway or a dungeon exists, no matter how far or close you are, no matter what camera angle you use, you will always pop in here. One also bonus, notice how I'm able to still see the outer, the cave, the mountainside here? Well, the thing is, if I can see the mountainside here while interacting with a cave, which usually, again, does not happen unless the cave exists with inside the mountain, regardless of how far you are or how close you are or what camera angle you use, then you can actually leave as you please, as long as the mountainside stays in view. If the mountainside doesn't stay in view, then you can't really use it. And you can already you can interact and do the mountain bypass glitch and doing the launching arc and going around and go right back in here and stuff like that. And same is true in the other cave. The reason why I want to go out here instead 
is because that since the mountain slope actually is re very, very close, it just hangs over, there's not a lot of room to do that. Because if the mountain slope is too is too low, when I'm trying to fly up, then Araka actually will just come on out. If he's able to clear it. If Araka is able to fully eject himself out of here, then he'll actually just phase out. Because remember that Arak will just fly straight through when fall when you follow through caves. That's how you exit a cave, is just fall to where the cave is. But as long as a cave does not that this portion of the mountain side does not hang over the cave, then you should be able to still do the mountain bypass glitch. If it does, then you're just gonna fly up and he's just gonna go through the mountain without ever even getting to the point where he's able to do it. We are back here with the double cave to discuss another unique situation when doing traversing over caves is the fact that this one is a unique situation where no matter where you go, you're going to end up inside the cave. Or it be the top one, the bottom one, the bottom one, or on the other side of the, the half mountain slope over here. That being said, what we learned before is that we can still, even if we go inside the cave here, we can still get out. So let's, so first off, since we still see this, we still are going to be actually entering inside the cave. Let's see if we can, but want to keep Arak high up here. Because that way he can still interact with the mountain here. Okay, now I now I am inside the cave. With that being said, I don't care as long as I can get to a position where I can actually see the mountainside. I will be able to know that I can actually continue traversing out of here as long as I can see it. Right now I cannot because I'm in a portion that does not exist uh, with the... Uh, because the reason why I'm not seeing the mouse side now is because I'm in the portion that does not exist. The portion over there always exists. Those two little round parts over there. But the one I'm over does not exist. That being said, I can still, this high up, as long as I can see the mountain over here, I can still interact with it and still bypass over as long as I keep Eric up atop with the invisible ceiling. So now... We're going to try going back the other way. Now this is going to be a lot more similar to the gateway to the Vow of the Fallen rather than trying to get out of the Vergata Tomb and back to the Outer Limits, back inside the mountain, is the fact that, again, that portion of the cave over there always exists. And that's the part that we're going to exit. So even if we actually end up inside the cave here, In fact, I'm going to move our down just a little bit because that part of the ceiling over to my right is actually right there. So we're going to move him down. Keep my outer limits here. Fly up because now I'm now I'm back. See, see, I'm now back over here and I'm able to just leave normally without actually having to care about the border of the outer limits of the cave. Again, that's because the cave all always exist no matter where you are in the outer limits meaning that that portion of the cave part of the mountain so if you if you are over a cave or a part of the cave where you see Arak and the mountainside that means you can traverse normally from the cave to the mountain and back however you cannot do that if Arak is disappears if you either see Arak without the mountainside or if you see the mountainside without Arak that means you're gonna have to kind of work your way with the uh, L2 the triangle the right control stick and trying to get Arak out of there the best you can but in this situation right here unlike the um, Forgotten Tomb there's no outer limit to really extend out to, so most likely you're as you're trying to fight to get out of there, you're gonna just end up being 
sucked out of the mountain, and you had to try again. Which what usually happens over here, but since over the Forgotten Tomb, it exists beyond that, that you don't have to worry about the mountainside, then you can just go ahead and Outer Limits and you won't get sucked out. So just be careful when traversing through here if you're trying to traverse over here and go back this way, as you're likely to get sucked out, which in part would be better to just do the Anywhere Mountain Bypass glitch, but this is for everything you need to know, and so there you have it. Let's go ahead and move on. Alright, continue our discussion on the caves, which we are actually behind the sea here. This has some relevance because I, to, in order to introduce this one portion about the caves, is I need to introduce this little glitch here, which is behind the seas, as we kind of talked about earlier, about getting behind the sea by bypassing the pushy boundary and so on and so forth. So now we're in behind the seas and the portion of the sea that we can actually descend down to. So there is a glitch here that revolves around having Ara coming down on the land here. And what we're going for is basically being able to, let's see here, what weapon do we have equipped? Is it the one I want? Yes, it's the one I want. Right so the glitch we're going to encounter here is where basically the weapon is going to be equipped while flying on Arak. And now it's kind of cool that also when doing that, that you actually maintain the effects of the weapon if they have any enchantment on it. Of course, you can't swing it around, but still, it looks pretty darn cool, especially with the torch. Now, we want to be sure we have red high enough above the water, which I think I did it right there, to be able to trigger Swimming Wren. Going off there, she is almost drowning. Well, not almost drowning, but she'll get there. You see, Arif just lit up. Well, what we're going to do here is going to move seas lighting up. That's because I got the torch effect going on. Let's go ahead and move on to the water. You know you got the glitch working. Also, if you have the meter up there, the uh, air meter. And then we come back over here, and now she has a weapon equipped. Every time she goes over land, or goes back on water and goes back on land, she will ha have the weapon equipped. And that being said... I can basically fly around with this enchantment that allows me to light the way. Of course, it's a very short distance, so but it makes Arak illuminated, and it is awesome when it's having the nighttime at Raven's Hole glitch. But also, one thing about this, if you hit the outer limits, you lose it. It's not that it deletes it. It just swallows it. It takes it away. Of course, even like flying back here, we can't even just find it or anything. It's just gone. It, the Outer Limits stole it. And for a second there, I thought they stole Arak. Okay. That being said, now here's the relevance when it comes to caves, or at least accessing the part of the caves. So let's go ahead and skip over to that after when we get this torch back lit up, which is basically we do the exact same thing. Well, first... We need to deactivate the glitch. Now I have a, a flameless torch. And we just get back on Eric. This will now have her no longer equip the weapon. She, you'll also notice that the uh, drowning meter is not on anymore. That's because it's now deactivated. So that's how you deactivate it. And so with that deactivated, we'll try it again. Let's see it get right height. Okay, I think I did it. Couldn't tell if it was too high, because you can still have red above the water and not be high enough. Okay, there we go. Two times in a row. That's pretty good. Okay. So we then fly up over here, and don't go too far, just enough that you can have our fly up over here, and there, and there we go. And then let's go ahead and move on to the mountainside. In fact, I'm going to save the game before going over there, and then we're going to... Uh, head on and fly over there to basically see how this pertains to the caves. We're here above the Forgotten Tomb. We're going to head and bypass into here. We're first going to try the first way of bypassing into the cave, which is through the Outer Limits. I'm going to try to do it while keeping the torch lit. I'm going to try... Okay. You see, right when I bypass the Outer Limit, the torch 
see it's no longer lit. It doesn't have a flame. And even if I were to fly out, it's still not lit. That's because when you bypass to the outer limits, temporarily, she's basically gone through, had the torch go into the outer limits. And so it's somewhere swallowed up somewhere in that outer limit part. And you just can't see it because the outer limits reveal nothing. Aside from maybe some occasional land masses that are not rendered with the rest of the level, but that's beside the point. So thankfully we have a second way to get into the cave here, which is essentially saving the game, which we just learned. And that's how we're going to get in here. With the torch lit. Don't worry that Arak is invisible or anything. The torch is still lit. Now if I can kindly get into here... That would be great. There we go. Hello, Arak. We got the torch light here. We want to be careful because the caves and dungeons have outer limits all around it. So it's a very... I can easily get over to the right here and turn off the glitch. That's how scary close these outer limits are. So be careful when you're flying around when you're trying to have this glitch activated. And to have this nice little effect... See how we turned off the Shadow Arak and now we got Arak lighting up here? Yeah, that's how you do it. I mean, if I were to go over here and uh, go into the Outer Limit, Arak will just turn all dark. So that being said, let's go ahead and give this a more kind of a good ambiance feel. I really don't want to tangle with the Outer Limit, so I'll just tilt it like that. And there we go. Now we got, now we got the actual background that's in the forgotten tomb and now we can just go ahead and fly on out of here with the glitch Woo! and now we can basically i mean of course i could just activate this nighttime sardana glitch at nighttime at raven's hole glitch and go all the way over to the sea and activate the glitch. That's one way to do it. Or you can just do it this way. Just be careful again not to try to activate the nighttime on the sides where the outer limits are. Because your torch will get turned off. Just do it like I did there. Okay. So one thing that you can do also if you if I get Eric in just the right spot to be able to clear out of here. So if you're trying to attempt to get out of here, if you actually keep Arak up high and you exit him out, you'll actually have the effect get stuck on the mountain. I have no idea why it does this. It might have to do with the fact that the mountain is invisible when you're exiting out, therefore making it into an outer limit that you can actually pass through because in actuality it's just a mountainside and so that there it takes the torch and not only that but also takes the sound effect as well so not only does it take the enchantment but it takes the sound effect and that's true with the outer limits too if you get your torch in the outer limit there if you get up really close you can hear the torch flame still going off but you with the torch here that's unlit, nothing. No sound, no flame, nothing. You're out of luck. All right, that being said, now let's actually talk about getting into the caves with Arak. Just FYI, you can actually also keep the torch lit if you go into caves that already exist inside the mountain at all times. Of course, you can't actually leave out this way. Do that. You basically have the outer limits and the mountain disappeared. So basically, it's only in the case when basically you're able to be above the cave immediately with the cave that's still vis with the mountainside that's still visible at all times, and then you can leave however you want and just continue on your merry way with the torch still lit. All right, now let's get to talking about getting inside these caves. All right. Now let's talk about using the mountain bypass glitch to get into certain caves. So let's talk about the cave that's down here and how to get out of here. Well, first off, in any caves like these, you can just simply go down right into them and be able to go right through the ceiling. 
Now, of course, if you have a stone ceiling like the passageway we were just mountain bypassing to back in Serdana, you actually uh, cannot go into there because the stones are solid all around. The ceiling here is only solid one way, which is also here, which is why you can't really just simply fly out through the roof and actually be able to uh, get out of here that way. Now, with this this one, you can actually actually wiggle Arik a little bit to be able to get to the entrance. If Arik would like to cooperate. There we go. Okay. And there you're able to leave out the cave. Though there is a cave back in the Adrian Isles where the Fendral Charts is, the exit to that cave, Ara can go in and leave as he pleases without actually having to work himself through. Now, most other caves has an invisible barrier that prevents Ara from going in, which also works the same as to keep him in if you're trying to exit out. So, in those situations, there is another way to have Arik leave if the situ if the circumstances uh, meet the requirements to be able to actually get out of the mountain by glitching through the walls. Let me show you. Okay, we are over to where the Grove Camps Cave is, which is a perfect example of how to actually get out of this uh, cave here via glitching through a wall which is right here if I can just get fly down here oh I guess that's too low of a ceiling Eric can actually descend down in here okay there we go there we go now he can okay now that we're in here sorry about the chicken there I just wanted some fried chicken. Now, let's see here. Now, in this one, you have a, a thing that's a candlestick. Uh, a candlestick. Yes, this is a candlestick, ladies and gentlemen. Be sure to use these type of things on your birthday cakes. Very thematic, very big. I'm sorry it can burn down your house if you use them properly, so be careful. No, this torch here... It's a perfect position where it's actually going to help push Arak out of here. And so to do that, we're going to have to wiggle Arak's tail into here, I think. Or actually, we can actually use his head here to be able to get into here, if I remember correctly. Yep, yep, getting in there, good. Because this little space is actually just too small for Arak. So we basically now just have to wiggle out a little bit, and we'll actually be have him to be able to phase right through the cave here, to then be able to fly out of here. It does take quite a bit of work, because basically the game doesn't want you to do this, but this is using a trick uh, that someone already came up with about bypassing into the bridal hall, or at least a very much incomplete one. But let's see here. Seems like it's going to take a little bit effort to try to get Arak into here. Sorry about that. Apparently you can actually uh, get stuck in there if done incorrectly. So it's probably a good idea to save the game before actually uh, before performing this glitch. As you might be able to get stuck. That's actually the first time where I actually got stuck with this. All the other times, I've actually been able to go right through here. Maybe I need it. Uh, there we go. And then fly out of here. I mean, apparently, I must have gone on the wrong side of it. So go on that side, and you should have a lot better time. But yes, you basically use L2. In fact, let's look at options, controller. You pretty much use L2, the left control stick, and the right control stick to choose the angle of the camera. Once we get Arak far enough into the cave, I mean far enough in outside of the wall, you can then fly with them. We're up above the cave where the client's mint's blade would be. So we're going to get in there and discuss one other thing also is 
Sometimes there are some things when even bypassing into caves that only Rin can get at, but you need to have our bypass into there in order to activate these glitches, which the one we're going to show you is the whiteout, whiteout conditions at Raven's Hold. Now the matter is trying to find exactly where the uh, place is. Oh, here we go. All right, so we're in here. Let's make sure we're okay. I do not want to hit that. That's uh, what, that is what, well, the aftermath after getting the Kleinsmith's Blade. One goes above, the other barrier goes down below. I forget if it's the tall one or the smaller one that goes down below. But what we want to do here is actually go over here and we want to be very up. Do not, do not mess up here. Okay, thank you for staying in. Okay, I need. I think I need to get down a bit lower because the roof is pretty darn close. The roof of the mountain side is pretty darn close. Okay, okay, I'm as far over as I can. I want to make sure. Yep. Okay, I can go a bit further. All right, let's try. Okay, get a little bit closer. Don't get too close or else our is going to be swallowed into the mountain. Let's move over just a little bit. Okay, a little close. Okay, there, that's close enough. Okay, because the, this background can only be activated. Oh, making sure. Did I keep it? Yes, I did. Okay, this can only be activated with Ren. Look, even the ghost stains have turned white. But now to get out of here, whoo! Because sometimes when I lift off, the wings clip into the cave and suck me in, and thus the glitch has failed. This is a condition where basically, even if I go in with Arok there, there actually isn't a good way to, for Arok to actually escape out of here. So in those situations where you can't get Arok out, but you can get Ren in to explore, rather it be a part of the cave that's basically you cannot even get close to walk on or glitches that only Rin is able to activate and it's better for Arab to stay out of there because there is no way for him to get out so in those situations you want to land Arak in a place close enough so he doesn't fly off because if I go far enough he will fly up and I either will be able to get him back or I won't but Keeping Arak down on the outside, keeping his feet, as long as you can see his feet or whatnot, you should be able to get close enough to be able to get mount on him, uh, and then be able to get out of here. All right, let's head on out of here and discuss one of the parts of the, when exploring these caves, you always have a chance that the game could freeze. However, you can prevent this from happening by identifying what can cause it, which is like that in part when our turns invisible specifically invisible with a shadow if you get it like a basically a shadow of Arok not dark Arok but a shadow of Arok flying through there Arok's gone well the game has a, s a slight possibility of freezing and I mean permanently freezing I don't mean that you can basically cycle through your powers here and as well as pause the game you can't do any of that However, I did do something akin to that when regard to rendering the game from a save and flying through the caves, which also yield the same effect of freezing the game entirely. And which I'm going to skip to that because trying to do the invisible hour thing is so far in between and very hard to do. So it's better to kind of show what I did very phenomenal job and I think and explain this. So let's go ahead and skip to let's do a flashback to one of the previous videos of looking back at the Valley Fallen when I was discussing this freezing glitch. Okay, the one thing I want to show you guys is this dreaded freezing glitch when trying to traverse out of here. See right here? You see what I mean? You need to be careful, especially when you load back from a save or when you're having trouble with our just being a shadow. Because this is likely to happen. Because the game, I guess, has so much going on in trying to render things 
that it will just quit on you, and this is the result. Oh, what beautiful skies. If only I could even press... I mean, unlike the Outer Limits, where when you go into a cave and then you go into the Outer Limits and then, for some reason, Arak is now stuck out there. However, you can press pause and stuff. I can't press pause here. And it's very frustrating, because now I have to get up off my lazy butt and turn and reset my game and get right back to doing some more glitch fun. Now, the smart thing to do just when you're going into exploring these caves through the mountain bypass glitch, just take your time. Don't try to speed run through it. And when you're loading back from a save, allow things to render a little bit. Then proceed and just be careful with the edges. So just fly along the path again and just fly around the edges and you'll be fine. What we need to do is basically since there's a problem with the, since it's both the mountain side and the uh, outer limit is connected right there. So there are two ways to go about this. You can tangle with the outer limits and try to get Arak to pop on the other side. You'll have to continually fight with the mountain to do that. Or you could potentially try to turn your camera angle to the mountain side so that you won't be ha you won't lose Arak in the outer limits and you'll be able to kind of traverse right through there. Uh, without having to tangle the outer limits. That's a bit more, uh, it's easier to do, but still this is rather tricky and hard to do without actually leaving uh, the inside of the mountain and going back outside. So let's go ahead and try this. In fact, oh, Arak, stand still. Oh. Stand still for me. Thank you. We'll save right here. Okay. So let's first do the part with tangling with the outer limits. So we're going to just turn our camera this way and not even just ignore it. Ah, darn it! Uh, it's going to respawn in time because of the outer limit there. I just made it to the other side. Let's load back and try again. Again, the right control stick is key in this to try to get the angle just right. Come on. Ah! Again, the outer limit is very difficult to do, but it's doable. So what I need to do is angle and try to keep toggling the control stick back and forth, even if Arak is, turns invisible because the camera angle is outside the outer limits. Okay, here we go. Oh. Oh. Nope, nope, there we go, I made it! Ooh, just a rotate around there and just I finally made it to the other side now Let's try a bit of more easier way to do it where we don't turn our camera angle to the outer limits Because again when the camera angle is in the outer limits. I can't respond or do anything But our could potentially be sucked out of the mountain before I the camera angle comes back in so again be very careful with that all right Let's load to the, to the next example. I apologize for any instance I say R2 instead of L2. It's just a little bit of a habit of mine. I do not know why, but it just is. So I apologize for that. So let's go ahead and do with the camera angle going this way. Whew. And there. There I didn't even have to even tangle with the outer limits there. I was able to make it to the other side, and then I can progress to the game normally. Now there's a nut, there's a harder one where it actually is right there on where the land changes, and that's right here. Look at this one right here. This one's bloody hard, but again, it's doable. Okay, so third example. Again, we're going to use the outer limits this time. Let's see, Eric, stay still. Uh, nope, not a good place, not a good place, not a good place, not a good place. Okay, we'll save here. The problem is not only that little slit of a land piece 
to mount a bypass through, but it also has to do with the fact that this is the part where the uh, mountain has an, an invisible landmass that's not present. It's right there. That's the invisible landmass. However, the game doesn't detect it, but when I try to do my method, I will actually load it out. Load the darn thing. Gosh. Uh, 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 come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Ah. Ah. Oh. Oh. I made it first try. Oh. Gosh. That. The outer limits is always like, is it going to work or not? But look at this. How in the world was I even supposed to make it through there in the first place? Again, just use the right control stick. L2 and just keep striding, keep using L2, keep angling Arak so his right wing is a touching the mountainside. But the question is, how about trying to go back? Actually, I might be in a kind of a pickle right here. Let's see. Can I actually go back? I think I might be able to. Okay. Okay. Stay in the mountain. Stay in the mountain. Stay in the mountain. Ah! Oh, darn it. I got pushed onto the other side. Darn it. Ah, this is going to be tough. I think I made it. Oh, I made it. Uh, again, since the outer limit is touching the mountainside, I'm still able to use the outer limit along with the mountainside maneuvering around. That's how I'm able to get through here. And that's why Arak isn't stuck, is the fact that I can still use the mountainside and the outer limits as a way to traverse, even though they're merging together. Alright, so let's go ahead and do the part where I don't use uh, the outer limits. I'm going to just use just the mountainside. Okay, Arak. Okay, rotate around. Oh, this is going to be tricky. Oh, I think I made it. Yes, I made it. Huzzah, I made it. I made it. Oh, yeah. Who's the boss? Oh, and a nice land bridge to get to the other side to complete my victory. Now that we're familiar with the outer limits and the mountainside, let's examine when we have two mountainsides and no outer limits to deal with. Here we'll be discussing mountain to mountain mountain bypassing, which revolves around using shortcuts or bypassing certain uh, events or enemies using the mountain bypass glitch. You most likely will be using the anywhere mountain bypass glitch as there is very few to none uh, normal mountain bypass glitch where you can use where there's actually a ledge available for you to use. So here you will be needing to use the anywhere mountain bypass glitch. Which again, holding uh, the controls L2, left control stick to st strafe, uh, tr triangle to keep Eric up, as well as the right control stick to angle Eric at the correct angle so Eric will actually be going into the mountain. Hold the control left control stick to the right, and there we go. Now, with that, as mountain to mountain is just like I just said. There is no outer limit here. So here I can just pop Arak over to this side. And then now I just made a shortcut to, to go directly to oh, the outpost here. And again, I can do the exact same thing going back over here. Then there, we pop out to the other side, go over here, fall on here to the other side of the mountain, and then I bypass right into uh, Ravenshold, the Northmen camp. So thanks for doing the shortcut to the port to get to Ravenshold here. We can also talk about the other benefit of doing the mountain to mountain bypass glitch, which you can also do when exploring the side of the mountain on the outer limit side, is bypassing cutscenes. Remember like the cutscenes and the pushy boundaries? The cutscenes are like the pushy boundaries where they have a certain limit they go to that you may be able to bypass them. 
and which in most cases for cutscenes is almost always when doing the Outer Limits, but here with the Mountain of the Mountain Bypass, which is the only way we can use it here to actually bypass the first cutscene in Raven's Hold. Now when bypassing cutscenes, you can do a whole slew of things, rather if there's enemies involved, kill them off, and then a lot of hilarity ensues when you do that, especially when the earlier episodes when we killed Dagmog, and then activate the cutscene and then kill him again, it's, you can see him fall forever. But what we're going to do here is actually go ahead and uh, zoom on over to doing the uh, nighttime at Raven's Hold glitch. And coming back here to activate the cutscene and see what happened. All right, here we go. You see how it kind of really changes the atmosphere of the whole cutscene? You can do this a whole variety of different locations, whether it be using the Mountain Mountain Bypass or being able to do uh, the Outer Limits to change the backgrounds and the variety here? of glitches you can do here. We were purpose here is to do glitches and trying to find she out what happens when we do them. Uh, okay. At ease. at ease, fellow glitch hunters. I apologize, but we're at war. The half men are pushing south from the ice fields again. We've come to well, we can glitch through to all the way to get the there to the and then just kill them off so right now. Boss. Really? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh, well, seriously, the, the mountain Are bypass glitch the is the breed? is as I said the before the, order the most the broken past. of all the glitches Nugget. in the game. Of basically, Nugget. what you can do with it. You know the location of the gates. All right. With that, with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, move on to discussing about a few things that you can find inside the mountain. A few objects and. And random things you can find inside the mountain and potentially maybe something in if with a little more hunting we can find something even greater so the mountain bypass glitch can lead to things lead to you to see objects that you would not be able to see otherwise such as trees blocks boxes or crates the many places that you can visit beyond the transition saves in the game. Random floating ghost people? Seriously though, what the f Random land masses that you can actually access. And then utilize to be able to access new heights. Or even partial cave structures. I have yet to be able to get into that partial cave structure even with trying to save the game directly over it but it could be due to the fact that if you look down below there's no place for Rin to run on and since that's not actually a uh, the rock there is not actually a place that where Rin will be running in general you need to have a land such as the one above me for Rin to traverse on so I think that's why my saving the saving the game over it is not working. But even if even with that, uh, it also leads to a question: Are there actually whole cave structures the developers left in the outer limits uh, that Ren cannot access, but Arak can because of the mountain bypass glitch? Because the developers never thought. That you can actually get in here. That being said, that would be actually cool to discover. And that means we would have to go through the entire Outer Limits. And thankfully, you can just do the Anywhere Mountain Bypass glitch to find these areas. Now, for this one, however, this one's located over... Let's see, where's the... Over just... 
west of the Gro the Grohl's camp. You see you flying down here, you see the landmass here. I think you guys get an idea where this place is for you guys to explore. That concludes our discussion about the everything you need to know about the mountain bypass glitch. Now, let us go ahead and apply what we learned by traversing the Vagatan tomb all the way to Dagmonk's lair, all from inside the mountain. Okay, everything that we have learned thus far. I'm going to try to do this without using the Anywhere Mountain Bypass glitch because this is how I originally discovered uh, getting into Jake Mud's lair with Arak. So we're going to go ahead and keep using the mountain side here and keep launching Arak around. Because I don't want to go in the outer limits just yet because I will just enter in the ancient tomb. Okay, let's get a little further away from the ancient tomb. We might be able to do our first save on the land bridge. Because, oh. again, I want to be able to have a choice in case um, if the outer limits is not the best solution. There. Crap. I just accidentally saved where the ancient tomb was, so we'll have to try that again. Okay, this time we're going to skip... Well, no, no, no. Stay true to the original. I thought I was far enough away. Okay, I don't think I need to worry about saving just yet. I think the only time I'm going to need to really save is when I get to those narrow uh, mountain sides. Well, the narrow passage between the outer limits and the mountain side. So we'll just keep hopping around here through the mountain. Launch Arak right there using the uh, right control stick. I mean, yeah, the left control stick and to tilt it to the right and then just tilt it to the left to launch Arak once when he's inside the mountain. Okay. Here. Okay, I definitely want to be on the mountain side because that curve right there is a bit hard uh, to do the outer... Oh, I think I'm going to get my first... Yes, this is a good place to save. Again, the outer limits over there is a little harder when you have that more rounded edges. Alrighty then, let's go ahead and continue on through this passage. Oh, yeah. And do the outer limits right there. Yes, good luck with that. When you have that high rise, you can't even tell where the angle is. I don't even know if you can actually make it. Okay, we're getting to a more narrow passage here. Let's see if we can still keep Eric in the mount. Ooh. Okay, I'm going to tilt him this way. I'm going to tilt this way. I'm going to... Oh, I think I'm... Yeah, I'm stuck on the outer limits. Okay, that's fine. I, I, I can use the outer limits here. Move along. Come on. Oh. There we go. Tilt Arak out there and then tilt his wing back to go. Ooh, this is not good. This is definitely not good. Come on, get away from there. Get out of there, Arak. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, this part. So I, again, I'm at the mercy of this low ceiling here in terms of where I can actually go, and the darn outer limit is very close, so I'm likely, when I launch Arak, I'm gonna just, um, phase out of existence, and then when I rotate back in, I'll be back here, so I need to really, really launch Arak. Whew, I think I managed to get free. Okay, now I can proceed. Whoa, I almost actually... Uh, got out of there without a fight. Again, when you have the mountainside uh, over the, over there that bows outwards, uh, then yeah, it's it can get a little tricky. Okay, I'm going to not try the outer limit strategy, and we're going to just go ahead and just use the mountainside here. 
fly backwards. <sighs> Come on. I'm slowly making it. <sighs> there. <sighs> made it. I made it. Okay, can I use the auto limits here? Might be able to. That's gonna be a bit tricky. We'll see if I can actually make it with the outer limits on this side. Okay, R2, 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 R2. L2, L2, L2. Again, I'm sorry I wanna use, I keep saying R2, R2, R2. It's L2, L2, L2. Okay, this is, can I still do this? Can I still do this? Yes, 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 yes. The answer is yes. Woo! Made it through. All right. Ooh, I'm almost there. I just saw the waterfall. I'm almost there. This is how I did it. But of course, back then, it took me forever. It took me actually uh, 14 minutes or more to actually get over there. But I had a lot of trouble with because I didn't quite know how to actually traverse those narrow passages. Okay. Now let's see here. I don't see I don't see any caves yet, so I'm not there yet. Let's see, let's get over right here. This is a good spot to save in case anything happens. Alright. I think I'm still gonna use the Yeah. Woo, that was nice and fast. Really, using the metal side is a lot faster. You just run the risk of actually losing Arak. Now, there is that, so let's see here. I think I'm going to use the mountain side and launch Arak to the outer limits, as long as the gap isn't too wide. Yep, keep flying, keep flying. Okay, launch. Right here. I am now here where Dagmog would be. And that, ladies and gentlemen, marks the end of this bonus video about everything you need to know about the Mountain Bypass glitch. Thank you for sticking through with me on this, and I'll see you in the Northern Tundra in the next episode. Like, comment, subscribe, and have a great life, everyone!